Hey everyone, Danny Dodge here. I'm going to show you today how to make this picture look like this picture. Now, normally it would be great to be able to make that uh, this one look like that in the lens, but but the fact is I don't have ten to twelve thousand dollars to buy a lens to make it look that way. So what I did is I used the lens I had, shot it like this, and then I took it into Photoshop, and that's where I'm going to show you all the tricks that I did in Photoshop. So first, I'm going to do is open that image up. Here it's an actual raw image right over here, just a raw image. I'm going to open it up in uh, Camera Raw, and you'll notice that the highlights are all burned out and everything. So what I'm going to do, come over to this area right here, and I'm going to take those highlights and bring them down more into the uh, recordable range. See, if, if they're up here, they're blown out. I and mean, if I open that up in Photoshop, I'll never be able to get those back. So while I've got it in the raw format, I want to bring those down into some recordable range. Next, I'm going to take the uh, blacks, play with them. And the blacks right about there look good. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, open this image up as is. And there we have the image in Photoshop. Okay, so it's, it's, it's retained everything we want. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my crop marks. So basically, we're going to come up here, hit the crop tool, and we're just going to crop this down to where we think the image would look really nice. So I want it more like a horizontal shot. Um, want all the log and all the duck in there. That looks pretty good. Let's get it. That's probably equivalent to maybe an 8 by 10 area right there. And I think we'll leave it at that. All right, so double click on that. That's the image we're working with. Now you'll notice that image is not the sharpest of images. It was because I was using a, a lens uh, that it's a good lens. It's a, a Tamra or Takina. Uh, 80 to 200 millimeter lens. Then I was putting a doubler on it. So that expands that image even more to get closer to it, and then it doesn't look as good. But we're going to show you how to do some stuff to help that out in the end. First off, I think what we'll do is uh, I'll put a, uh, we're going to call it a sharpened one here. Do unsharp mask. And what we can do is we're basically on these, we're telling. Uh, light and dark pixels that are next to each other become lighter and darker. So it's building contrast in, in a local area. So as you can see right here, it's actually increasing the contrast. If I lower this down, like I lower the amount, I'm only doing a radius of two pixels right now. If I lower this down, you see how it gets softer? I bring it up to maybe 80 or 90, then it does. It increases contrast right there at the edges of the contrasted areas. Now, if I was to bring this up and make it wider, what it does is you can start seeing the line of contrast between the two edges there. And if I do it really big, there, it gets really contrasty. And in the image, it's horrible. So we want to find a happy medium. And I think right around 2. And remember, this is not the best case scenario. This image was... Uh, it could have been shot with a better lens, but I'm not, exp I'm not an expensive sort of guy when it comes down to my hobbies. I've got plenty of that money wrapped up in all the other goodies I have to have for work. So um, I'm seeing a little much of the grain, so I'm going to just drop down the percentage of what we're doing here a little bit there and click OK. All right, now the image is a little sharper, and that just allows us when we're going to do our cropping. So basically, we got, we've got to do three things. Uh, we're going to have to cut the bird out and cut the bird and the log out and make that one layer. And so and here, I'll go back to it. Photoshop really does what I call panes of glass work. So if you had a pane of glass here, a pane of glass here, and another one behind here, until you put something on those panes of glass, you don't see anything, but you're looking straight through those panes of glass. So anything, if I put a black dot here, one over here on the second pane of glass and one over here, you're going to all see all three of them, but you're going to be seeing them on the same 2D dimension. So in other words, you see three dots, but they're on one flat surface, okay? But that's how we work with Photoshop. We take three or four or five or ten pictures and work with them. We either cut them out, change the quality of the image, uh, we incre increase contrast, maybe change the opacity where you can even see through them, or any number of other things. And today what we're going to do is we're going to work with three different things. One is the pen tool, which we cut the duck out and the log. Then we're going to use uh, another part of the pen tool to cut out some uh, some of the leaves. Then we're going to blur certain areas. So let's get started here. First thing I'm going to do, and I'll do this in a fast, speedy motion here in just a second. I'm going to do Command Plus to get in tight. We're going to start cutting this thing out. So bear with me as I start creating a mask here.
All right, so I have cut that, and that took probably 10 minutes to actually cut that whole thing out. Now, you'll notice now that the entire area here has been selected, but I've got some grasses and stuff or some different weeds that are going to probably need to be cut and made as a front layer. So what I'm going to do is just right-click on one of the dots, and I'm going to say Make Selection, and I'm just going to put it down to one pixel. That's The one pixel gives it just a tiny bit of a blur because you want it to equal the blurriness of the image, which is just slightly blurred anyhow. So I'm going to click OK. So then what I'll do is Command-C and then Command-V, and what that'll do is copy and paste that bird right over top of the other picture. So if I turn that background picture off, you can see what I've copied out here. Now this makes it easy also to see which of these I need to actually copy uh, and make a foreground layer of. This one will be our background layer. Okay, and now I'm gonna turn it off, and we're just gonna work on this image to create another mask that allows us to clip out the greenery that would be otherwise out of focus because it's a little closer to the camera. So there'll be this stuff right here, um, this right here, and maybe I'll cut that out too. All right, so here we go. Once again, time lapse this, and we'll get this done. So now I've cut out most of the greenery in the foreground. There's just one other I want to get, and that is this leaf, these two leaves right over here. So we'll go back in and do another selection to add with that one. And keep in mind, I am not doing the best job of cutting this out. This is all just for time and expl explanation. So basically you get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm not doing a real great job whatsoever. And those right there, since they don't have any data in there, I'm just going ahead and uh, clip it out and around so I don't have to be real tight and uh, worry about that. Okay, I believe I've got it all uh, selected now. What I'm going to do is just click and drag across all those to act every, everything there. Let's go in just a little tighter. And then once again, we're going to create another selection. So I just right-click on one of the dots, uh, make selection with uh, just a one-pixel feather. All right, we got that. Now what we're going to do on this part is copy and paste again, but we have to make sure we're on the right layer. We're on the duck layer. We'll just go ahead and name that duck. All right, and this is our background. So we do that. We're going to do paste. So the top layer is now what I would call foreground. I'm going to just rename that foreground. Okay, so we have our foreground, our duck, and our background. And now we're going to do a video blur that will equal what we would see in the lens. Uh, before I do that, though, I think what I want to do, you see how all this white and light back here distracts from the duck? I'm just going to select my background image, and then I'm going to do a feather of a selection. So feathering means it just kind of fades out as it goes over a period of time. So rather than having a hard edge line right here, it's going to kind of feather out to where there's nothing there. So you don't see a hard transition. So I'm going to do my uh, square tool here. And I will probably select down to about here, all right, and then go up to select, pull it down to select and mask, and we're going to modify that. So I'm going to go over here to feather, and as I do that, you can kind of see how that's feathering out my selection area. Over here, one hard line. Over here, not much of a hard line. All right, so once I do that, I'm going to copy and paste that. And what I do a lot of the times is I like to copy and paste new layers rather than working the, on the existing one because I can always go back uh, instantly to the original so that I can do things that I probably shouldn't have done or eliminate an entire uh, layer that I shouldn't have. So I'm going to do Command-C and Command-V. And now if you look at this, I basically have that with my foreground showing up here. So I've got my background and my foreground. Well, this will be, okay, let's name this one. Okay, we're gonna just name it background one for right now and rename the original layer to um, untouched. There we go. All right, so we got them all named. We got our, back, our untouched, our background, our duck, and our foreground. I'm going to turn the untouched background off because we're not going to even use that just yet. So let's turn all, all everything off except the background. The background is going to be all of this behind the duck, right? All of this will be our foreground, which is in front. That'll be blurred out. 
And then, of course, we have our duck alone by himself. So I want to work on this background here. So, And I'd like to rename that just background, not background one. The only reason I had to do that before was because if I renamed it background, it would say, nope, this one's called background, and my, it would have caused some problems. So now that we have all of our layers separate, what we want to do is prepare the background image, which is this one right here. It's going to be anything that's from the duck behind. And we're going to delete the duck because we don't want the duck a part of the background. So what we're going to do is, is uh, open up the uh, duck image. So I go up to select, load selection, because we are on the duck's image over here, and do that. So now we have that. But what we want to do is go to the background Click on the background to activate that. And I'm going to turn the duck off just so he's not overlaying on this. And when I hit delete, the duck disappears. So now what we've got is a background image without anything else other than that which would be behind it. And we're going to work on the focus. So uh, the way this works is if a lens has a depth of field of this much, everything behind it is going to get progressively out of focus more and more. And what we have to do is imitate that. So I'm going to do a selection of... Well, basically the whole thing this time. And we'll apply a blur on that. So go down here to Gaussian Blur. Where is it at? Right there. Gaussian Blur. And create a blur that's equal to what would be closest to that duck, right? All right. So 5.2 pixels. I think that'll be good. And then we're going to actually create another selection. Let me just reduce this a little. This next selection is going to be everything from a maybe four or five feet back. Uh, and then I'm going to feather out that selection, All right? And we use our feather tool, and you'll notice rather than having a real hard line here, I've uh, got a nice feathered line. So if we go back to the original, there's the hard line. When I feather it, there it is. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is apply another Gaussian blur on that. Just vary that a little more. This time it's going to pump it up to maybe 9.5. All right, and we basically can take this this um, uh, selection and hold shift and move it back to our next point of focus. So basically, we're only going to select this area and defocus. Now let's go back up to the Gaussian and blur it a little bit more. Ooh, too much. You can see how it doesn't look realistic. So probably right about there is good and hit OK. Now if we click on our duck layer and activate that one, we can kind of see how things are looking. Now you notice around his wings we're seeing the background kind of the pixels that show that that's just straight seen through to, to nothing. In order to uh, fix that what we want to do is take the background layer and duplicate it up because when you focus and uh, when you feather something out there's still pixels there of that image but there's very few of them. So the more you duplicate your um, image the more they fill in. Every time I do that you can see how much they have filled in now we don't have any of that so in order to be able to work with this efficiently i'm just going to select all of those background layers and i am going to go up to layer down to merge layers and merge those layers so now it's one background layer and that background layer is prepped and ready i want to do one more thing though when i bring up the untouched image just to fill in this place uh, it helps me see what I'm doing. So I'm going to darken this background image in here. And I'm going to adjust that up here to image, to adjustments, down to levels. Levels uses the histogram once again. And this part right here controls the midtones. And you can see if I take those midtones down, it, it gets the background. It keeps the background from competing in brightness with the duck. And it, it does a lot better. So down here, the output levels just to controls... Uh, the brightness of the white. So bring those down just a touch, not too much, and I think we're good. So here's before, and here is after. So I think that's a whole lot better. Now you see how things are just starting to come together here now. Okay, now that we have the background all set, we want to work with the foreground. Now I have that in two parts. So I have the foreground, which is nothing but these leaves here, which were in front of the log, and then I have the complete image which we're going to use. Now, in order to do this, what I want to do is just duplicate that untouched image, turn off the base layer. So now what I want to do is just select this lower portion, which would really be the uh, things that are in front of that duck and the log, and do a graduated selection on that. So we'll go to Select, down to Select and Mask, and we're going to feather that out. Okay, there we go. 
I'm going to click on it, hold shift, bring it down a little bit, and that'll get most of the stuff that's just in the foreground. Once again, I like to copy and paste this. There we go. Now we're going to blur that. We'll go down to blur, Gaussian blur, and you can see the stuff in the foreground is kind of blurred. I think it's a little too much, but there we go. That's a little more realistically done. Now you see it blur blurred the log, and that's not where we want that to happen. So what we're going to do is go to the uh, layer that we just created, call that our, our utmost foreground. I'm just going to take my lasso and we're going to select our log. So we just go around here anywhere the log is, uh, right in here where the log is behind all the greenery. And I'm doing this as fast as I possibly can, so it's not going to be a really great selection or a cutout. Probably going to be the worst you've ever seen but it'll get you the idea of what I'm doing. All right, and then we just kind of wrap around like that. Okay, now we're just gonna uh, blur that one just a touch so that we can actually equal it out to what the other elements in the picture are and hit delete. So there you go, you can actually see that the difference is we have a log that is in line with the uh, duck vertically. We don't want that to be out of focus. Uh, and then again, we have the, the leaves that were are still in focus right here. Uh, those were clipped out originally. What I want to do, actually, is turn everything else off, and you can see those leaves. There you go. So these leaves I cut out perfectly so they can add to this whole effect, and I'm going to blur those now, but I'm going to turn all the other images on so we can get a good idea of how much to blur those. So we go up here to Gaussian Blur again, and just a tweak of a blur. Okay. There we go. I think that's good. All right. The only other thing I would like to do is take the duck and work on him just a little bit to, to make him pop a little more. So you see we have the duck here. I'm going to just make a, a lasso right around him and feather that out a little bit. I always like to feather because it helps to eliminate any noticeable edges, hard edges. All right. There we go. That's probably good enough. And... Command H to hide that lasso. Then I'm going to just increase the contrast on him a little, just using the levels. So let's make those whites a little, little touch whiter. I think the blacks are probably where we want them at. Midtones, you know, we could actually make him kind of punch out there. And there you go. And a lot of times it's better to work with all the images on to me, see if it's actually where you want it to be. I can tell right now that maybe it's a, just a little powerful on the um, the gray so let's punch those up maybe not okay there we go right there all right the image is looking really good and the only other thing I would like to do is go to my fork or my yeah my foreground layer and I'm going to just a feathered edge selection here we're going to uh, feather that selection a little bit all right and I'm going to adjust the uh, mid-tones on that just like I did on the others. I'm going to use levels and darken those down a little because they were just a little bit bright. Okay, That's the leaves by themselves. Now let's go down to the new foreground that I created, which is the utmost foreground, and do the same to that. Go to adjustments, down to levels, and just play with them a little bit. So what they do is that by darkening that down, it, it, it just doesn't compete with the duck as much. There. All right, now the other thing that I didn't tell you, and this would have been really good if I did tell you, and it's extensive, is to go in and create what they call alpha around the uh, duck, because then what you can do is feather out uh, and blur the edges out here, because the duck's wings are in motion. So. I did that in the final, and you can actually really critique that there. I didn't do it here. I think what I would do is if I really wanted to do this, I'd just fudge this a little bit on this one here. I'm going to just click right here to select the duck. So now I'm just going to run up to my blur tool, and that's just behind the little hand. If you click and hold, it'll give you that blur tool. And you can change the size of it right here by going like that to a big or back down here to uh, just about the right size for me. 
All right, and just click off of that, and then make sure your strength is up about 100. So then I'm selected on the duck's background. There we go. And I can go in and just start blurring this out a little like it's got motion blur. And that'll help it blend with the background as if it was the, you know, what it was. And I can go over this and lose some of that pixely stuff too. Uh, that'll help just kind of make it look blurry and realistic as well. All right, so the image is looking really, really pretty good. And the last thing I would want to say is, that you know, save this out as a Photoshop file first off before you save it as like a JPEG. Because if you save it as a JPEG, all the images, all the layers are going to come together and you'll never be able to work with them again. But let's say, for instance, the art director says, I don't like the way this is so bright up here. If I open the image back up and came up to this layer, which is the uh, top portion, then I can actually do a graduated selection just like I did before. And I'm going to select, actually, let's turn all those other images off. And I will feather that out once again, just like I did before, pretty heavily. There we go. Now, turn all the images on so I can see kind of what it looks like together. And go to Image, Adjust, and we're going to adjust the levels once again. We'll take the midtones, drop them down. See, I wouldn't necessarily do it that dark. No, nope, doesn't look good. But if I did it somewhere in the range of maybe that there looks more realistic and we've got a really great image. So that's how you get to that. It's a lot of work, but doggone it, if you enjoy this kind of work, it can be very, very rewarding. If you look at that, we're looking at the, uh, the one we finished all the way back up to that original. What a difference. All right, let's go back to that. I can't stand looking at that one. That is one classy image. So hopefully you've learned something from all of this and can take it home and do whatever you want with the images at this point. There's a lot to be learned about Photoshop, but boy, is it powerful. Um, if you want a link to the lens that I used, I do put that down at the bottom of the post. And uh, then, you know, that actually helps me as well. So at that link, if you click on that link, and no matter what you buy, once you click on that link, it actually gives me a percentage of the the cost of what goes into buying that product, but it doesn't raise the price. You don't pay for any of that. It just helps me out to be able to do these free tutorials in the future. And like here, give people really great information they can use in the real world. So do that. Subscribe for me. And if you need to order either the lens or anything else, just click on that link. You can go to Amazon and buy all kinds of stuff, and it helps me continue on these free tutorials. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. No matter what it is, no matter how we do it, it's going to be fun.